Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Stock Connection with the Willie Comic Grown Up. We've covered this week's X Men books as well as this week's Star Wars books, and now it's time to move on to this week's Spider Man books. That's right, a whole video of just Spider Man books. It's been a while since we had one of those. Anyway, moving on to our first, or starting off with our first book, we've got Spider Man number six, continuing End of the Spider Verse. Where we left off, things were not looking good for. Uh, the spiders. Most of the most of the spiders had been uh, corrupted by uh, Sha by Shathra. Um, a few had uh, were internet were could not be corrupted. Um, Hunter Spider and Miles Morales went to uh, gather intelligence, though Miles got uh, captured. And since he was, since he could not be controlled by Shathra, was in prison with those who, with the others who couldn't. Peter parked car, spinneret, a few others. And um, we also discovered that though Peter Parker, Spider-Man had been removed from six months, from Earth six months six months six had been removed from existence. That was simply the the concept of Peter Parker as a spider as the spider totem, and so reality re rewrote itself, and Peter Parker was there is so there's still Peter Parker in Earth's Honor Six One Six. Last issue we got uh, that Peter Parker's origin, and he's been asked for help from another reality. So, um, it appears that Shatra has maybe not won, but oh, it's definitely looking like a win for her. And she's, um, Moreland has a plan, take the totem dagger, and, it, it, well, if they had the totem dagger, take it, and, uh, go to Loom World and stab Shatra with it. Should do that should erase her from existence from reality. Turns out they do have the, the, the totem dagger because uh, Night Spider grabbed it. <laughs> she is, after all, Felicia Hardy, and well, she's still a great thief. But uh, Silk suggest so they go with, actually what well, likes more of those plans. The opposite, they go with it. And um, they head to Loom World, um, in, having taken Iran. Basically, they're doing the whole bit from uh, A New Hope, bringing uh, prisoners to the, uh, in the detention corridor while disguised. But uh, yeah. That it doesn't work out, and uh, Peter Palmer, uh, the Spider-Man, no hyphen, of Earth 616 Beta, well, he's there, and he comes in, and Moreland takes the dagger, stabs Shatter with it, but nothing happens. Elsewhere, um, Madam Web, Night Spider, and Hunter Spider are... Uh, Go to rescue Miles. They uh, they knock out Mayday and Miguel with uh, trank with trank darts and um, Peter Parts car and uh, and Miles head out into the Spider Verse to maybe see who's who they, they can grab additional allies. There's a fun little moment where uh, Spinneret, who is a who is Mary Jane with spider powers uh, from the Renew Your Vows uh, reality uh, has a bit of an amusing moment about uh, or has a bit of an amusing comment about the fact that Felicia Hardy is a spider or oh, there's a world where Felicia Hardy is a spider 
But, uh, yeah, um, the fight, uh, I mean, doesn't go well. And we learn that we learn something about the inheritors. <clears throat> They're totems as well. Leech totems. Shathra states they're the, the lowest of the totems. They feasted on spiders to steal their, their powers, their access to the web of life. But, uh... Back on our 616, a couple of the, uh... Spider UK and a couple others are there, and one of the other spiders are there to defend uh, Peter Parker when he's attacked by two of the uh, corrupted spiders. Uh, the rescued spiders attack as well, and uh, Moreland, having been humiliated and beaten by Shathra. Ops to uh, steal some life, steal the life force of Silk, because he's weakened and needing to feed. Silk, holding the totem dagger, reacts and cuts his arm, and it's glowing. The cut, that is. And it's then so, so she then uh, slices him up, the, and apparently all of the spider totems that he's ever eaten go back out into the universe. And that is where the issue ends. I think they're definitely It will be interesting to see how they kind of reintegrate uh, Peter into being Spider-Man. Um, one thing we, we just got, we learned from this, of this new Peter is that his Uncle Ben's still alive. Um, I I I, I kind of hope that when he gets kind of refused with into reintegrated into things that it doesn't he doesn't still have those memor the memories of, of that Spider Man because of right that Peter Parker because that it was rough enough after House of M with uh, him having Gwen back and being married to her and having kids with her he he was uh, not in a good place after House of M and. Try to take that out, and it was hard for him to not fully take that out on Quicksilver. But uh, anyway, moving on to our next book, we've got Venom number seventeen. So this, okay, so one where we left off, time gets funny in some things. So um, after Dark Web. Um, Eddie, having basically in the bedlam form, um, well, he was beaten once again and he fell. And he's been falling. A lot. Fell from the highest point of uh, limbo and, well, well, further into limbo, reflecting on the various, uh, on, and it seems he needs, he, the narrator says he can use a hand. But uh, the point he ends up in limbo is a point where, where some of the uh, techno demons reside. Um, the tech, the transmit virus starts to make its way into the symbiote. But as Eddie is the king in black, he is able to uh, stop the transmit infection. And goes after the, the techno demons. However, the well, not, we, former uh, former ruler of, of Limbo, Darkoth, appears. This is, now, if you'll recall, uh, it, it was an issue of Thor last year, wherein uh, Thor and Venom worked together to fight Darkoth. Who had been possessed? Who was seemingly uh, under control of a symbiote? It would. It turned out it was not actually um, 
Venom that was uh, working with Thor, but rather Meridius. It was also stated that we would look that in Venom number 17, we would learn what happened. Well, Bedlam and Dark Off duke it out. We get basically two versions of what of how it, how it plays out. But uh, this Dark Off's soul sword is uh, broken by uh, by Bedlam, though. Bedlam also, Dark Off also stabs him with, with his soul sword, and that's how, causing Bedlam to, Eddie, to explode. Which is how symbiote uh, matter got, in, got onto Dark Off. A stepping disc uh, opens, opens Asgard, and, well, Dark Off flees through it, leaving his soul sword. Eddie continues to fall, and is, well, he appears in a pool, and the narrator start, is now whoever's narrating is talking to him and say, saying that he walks the path of the magician. Presumably, in some ways, I, I the way it reads, it seems like it's equally a reference to magic, to magics and comics, as well as the tarot card the mage. But Eddie continues to make his way through this realm he's in now. And the only light appears to be the clawed hand of Venom. Just the hand. With five... Uh, as though a, a candle made of, the, made of the hand and lights on each fingertip. And that is where the issue ends. Interesting. Uh, it looks like we, we. This is also the first issue for our, for new creative team, or for new art team. I think I, I have to look at la, I have to look at last month's, but I, I think Brian Hitch did last month's issue. But uh, Cafu is now doing the artwork for Venom, and next month is supposed to kick off kind of the next big arc. So anyway, moving on to our next book, we've got Spider Gwen Shadow Clones. So. Spider Gwen, Ghost Spider, uh, in in her more re most recent adventure, she faced not variants of herself, but sort of more aspects of herself that that amalgamated into other Marvel heroes as well, and they all teamed together to uh, take on. Um, finale at the end of time. Anyway, um, so we begin with a flashback to a few months previously. Um, the Sinister Six, or well, five of them at least, are on Earth 65. Rhino, Sandman, Vulture, Craven, and Doc Ock. She defeats them. Um, a lab is damaged in, in every. In, Vulture gets knocked through a lab, the window of a lab, and uh, then hurls a bunch of explosives into it. But one didn't explode yet until Ghost Spider and Vulture left, and it killed the one of the scientists working in the lab. Then Earth sixty five is present. Um, Gwen is waking up. Uh, Mary Jane is there. Explain that apparently bring Mary Jane's grow, growing some flowers, and since the Mary Janes are going on a road trip, um, Gwen has, has been tasked with taking care of uh, MJ's flowers. Also, Gwen's late for work, so she goes to her uh, barista job late, but. The boss is okay with it. Um, they flirt a bit, and they're after work. They're walking, but as they're they're talking and, and walking, and it seems they're that Mateo's about to ask her out, but her spider sense goes off. She stops a robbery. 
webs the guys to the wall, and leaves, basically leaves them the mercy of the bodega owner. She continues to swing around and sees a, what appears to be Doc Ock. Following, but getting closer, it's her as Doc Ock. Ghost Spider and and uh, Gwen Ock, uh, Guac, Doc Gwen, I don't know. Duke it out, and uh, Ock Gwen is uh, subdued. But there's a device on her on her neck, and so Ghost Spider removes it, and Gwen Ock suddenly has a very different outlook on things. Like, what's going on? You know, does seem doesn't know where she is. So they go to Earth, to Reed Richards of Earth 65, and um, he, stud, he, ta he looks at the device, and also uh, some other, as well as a few other things. It turns out that Gwenok is a clone of uh, Gwen, as well as her brain patterns are modeled at seem to be modeled after two, uh, after Gwen and Doc Ock. Reed starts to wonder if it's, if it's maybe possible that somebody, that this was done. It, one that it's quite likely this maybe it had been done before because it seems very, you know, because of the way everything seems to be working out. And as he's saying this, Sand begins to uh, filter into uh, the Richards' home, and Sand Gwen appears, and that is where the issue ends. All right, good start. Um, I, I do. I, I love. I love uh, the Spider Gwen miniseries. I, I do. It it it, you know, it does make me sad, right? Constantly that uh, her that. We don't have a, an ongoing with her. I mean, it, I realize it was part of the reason the last one, and it was likely it was potentially speaking sales. I'm not, I can't say for certain, but it'd be nice if we had a, a regular uh, Ghost Spider Spider Gwen book. Moving on though to our next book, we have Spider Man Unforgiven. This is the first in a series of one shots. Um, So, um, Spider-Man witnesses uh, the sorcerer of Salome breaking into a building, but then we go back to a group of vampires training, and uh, not just training, but also working, the youngest of the bunch, working on uh, tempering their more um, thirsty impulses. These are the Forgiven, a group, a group of vampires led by the vampire Rise of Kodo. Um, Rise of Kodo um, fought alongside Captain America during World, World War II. Well, he was at the time a vampire. Basically, he, he Cap Cap inspired Rise of Kodo, and so the Forgiven are. Night Eyes, Ghost Blade, Inca, spelled I N K A, Quick Shot, and Red and it was Recruit, Red Blood. But they uh, end up <clears throat> following up on some. Uh, or, no, and Visigoth. Visigoth has been watching and noted Salome breaking into the building and Spider Man going after them. They're going in after her. Um. Spidey talks to an a woman inside the building. Apparently, the building itself, on the lower floors, is um, an, an antique store, and the upper floors are residential. But uh, Spidey fights uh, Salome. Now, a quick quick recap of who Salome is: um, evil sor uh, sorceress type. Um, my initial exposure. The first time I ever heard of her was back in the aftermath of the Siege of Darkness crossover back in the mid, mid to early to mid-90s. 
Um, it was a Midnight Suns crossover. Um, during the during the crossover, Doctor Strange was seemingly killed, and Salome took over as the Sorcerer Supreme. Though uh, Avatar, kind of, sort of, of Strange, of Doctor Strange, referred to simply as Strange, who totally didn't look like a Spawn ripoff, um, defeated Salome, and then the Good Doctor returned and retook the mantle of Sorcerer Supreme. But um, she briefly does what she can to corrupt uh, Spidey with her magics, leading him to uh, attack Red Blood. But uh, he manages to pull himself together, and uh, the Forgiven and Spidey manage to take down uh, Salome. Uh, the sort, the the Mystic that. Uh, Spider-Man ran into earlier. Um, basically, deals the, the finishing blow to uh, Salome, but then seemingly has some health troubles, and uh, so the ambulance is called, and as the sun rises, that's one thing about the Forgiven. They have a means of... Uh, they, they each have a light-bending crystal, which allows them to survive in the sunlight. But uh, as Spider-Man swings away, Red Blood re removes Rizos, and, uh, well, Vampire, Sunrise, not a good combination. And Red Blood goes to report to a shadowy, fi to a shadowy figure. Can't tell the name of the, of the company, but and then uh, near Colony Beach in Maine, um, police have found something odd has occurred, and uh, the, but the police have have also have brought in local police have brought in someone that would probably be able to help. The X-Men. Among the things found in, at this crime scene is a severed hand. Among the X-Men present is Jubilee and Logan. And so, this will, which in fact this will be continued in X-Men, forgiven. Why is Jubilee involved? Well, back during the 2010s? I think it was during the Utopia, during the Utopia era. Maybe, actually, no, I think it was during the Utopia era, but before the, before Schism, Jubilee became a vampire. Rise of Kodo was actually involved in that story. So, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm like this. I, I'm not sure how I entirely feel about the whole series of one-shots thing, but, you know, I, I feel like it could have just been. I, I feel like with with these same same with the recent Murder World one shots, they could have just been Unforgiven, and then yeah, but whatever. Moving on though to our last, yes, our last book for the moment, we have Hallow's Eve number one, kicking off uh, the Hallow's Eve miniseries. So Hallow's Eve, uh, Jean Gobby was uh, um, Ben Riley's girlfriend. She was conditioned while he, he was working for Beyond, the Beyond Corporation. She was conditioned and released from prison. Um, when Ben made a, a deal with uh, Malik Pryor, the current the new ruler, the current ruler of Limbo, well, <clears throat> not only did uh, Ben get a, something of a power up, at least temporarily. Janine did as well, becoming Hallow's Eve. She now has a bag full of uh, Halloween masks that, when she puts them on, she gains abilities kind of relating to, oh, relating to the mask. So she's walking around New York, and apparently there's a big old billboard saying she's wanted for murder. Ducks into an alleyway, pulls out a mask, model mask, and uh, yeah. So then goes into a bank. Puts on a ghost mask and uh, goes makes her way into the vault. 
apparently the plan is to uh, take a sizable amount of money. The idea being that uh, once you can get Ben out from uh, the prison in limbo he's being held in, two of them can start over and not have any trouble. But the security guard walks in and uh, to the vault and uh, tells her not to move, so Janine puts on a werewolf mask, attacks the security guard, uh, disarming him and scratching his arm. But she then escapes with her with the money and yeah. Um, cops go. Cops are called, uh, with one of the police being told it's, it's a weird one. Uh, Max, the Beyond Corporation has also heard, learned about this, and uh, security camera footage, all that, and Maxine Danger. Is going to lead, take the lead here. Now it turns out that Janine is hiding out in a uh, one of the abandoned construction sites in, in New York. The idea, you know, ran out of funding, ran out, of, you know, or developer lost interest, whatever. But um, there is one one that she does point out. One of the, there's one of the masks she doesn't like. It's the vampire mask. It always leaves her hungry for for a rare steak. Very rare. At the bank, um, Maxine takes picks up a uh, sample of fur to masquerading as a uh, as part of the forensics team. But um, the, uh, the security guards about how about what happened. When he gets outside, however, he, be, he changes into a werewolf himself. And the ambulance, uh, the fake ambulance, drives off. And Janine's seen this on TV and realizing that she is responsible for what everything, for what that guy's going to be, or what the security guard's going to be going through. And that is where the issue ends. And that is going to do it for it. It's a it was good start. Um, we'll have to see how the whole thing plays out. Um, I don't imagine it's going to end with her with Janine rest freeing Ben from Limbo. Maybe it will. I mean, it's I, I kind of get the feeling that the idea of Ben being in prison in Limbo is one of those. Eh. We don't want to kill Ben off, but we, you know we can't just have him you know, be okay, so, yeah. But, uh, anyway, that's going to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.